Hello, welcome to the Jazz Museum. How are y'all doing today? Good, good, good. So glad that y'all are here. Yes, a clap is nice. That's nice. Yeah. On behalf of New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, uh, we're so delighted to have this partnership with the New Orleans Jazz Museum. The New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park mission is to instill a public appreciation for New Orleans jazz music, for its culture, history, music, the musicians um, that continue to share this craft. And we do so by having programs like the Arrowhead Jazz Band and weekly programs that educate, entertain you, and hopefully enlighten you. And so, happy Black History Month. So if you woke up black, shout out to you. Yeah. Shout out to you. Um, you know, it's really wonderful to have a space to just really encourage black artistry, black music, and just the black experience and share it with people outside of, the, outside of the community that also are allies. So we're gonna get started. This whole entire month, we'll be going through black American music and the subgenres that are in it. In it. And so uh, today we will start with its roots and that's the blues. So without further ado, I'm gonna welcome up the band. Um, on vocals today, we have Saskia Walker, who's our intern. Drums, Gerald French. Yes. Upright bass, Carrie Lewis Sr. And piano, Shea Pierre. And like I said, if you are visiting out of town, please check out these programs via uh, Facebook Live. You can find it at New Orleans Jazz Museum Facebook Live or New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park so you can continue on this journey with us exploring black American music. Let's start off with some blues. I believe Saskia Walker has a blues that she's going to talk about and sing as well. Hi. So um, as Jade said, we this month are honoring black American music and um, the blues is our first step in the, in the travels throughout its history. And um, this tune was composed or made famous by Mamie Smith, Bessie Smith's sister. And um, as, is it well, you'll soon find out what it hears like. Um, <laughs> Thank you. 
So for some of you, you may have just woken up five minutes ago and it's early in the morning, maybe. And this is the song that we're gonna sing next, early in the morning. It's morning somewhere, just not here. It's morning for jazz performers. <laughs>
that was Baby Please Don't Go <laughs> by Muddy Waters. Uh, yeah, so before we move on to the next song, what I appreciate about the blues is that it's not just about songs that maybe come from not the happiest of places, but it's all about soul music. I feel like it's the root of soul music. It's the root of getting into this traditional style music. It's it's songs from the heart, you know? And before the blues, we had shouts and uh, work songs. And these and this tradition has a beginning, but it's also continuing and continuing to grow in other shapes and forms. And what I love about this journey is that you can you can sing the blues at any at any point of your life, whether you're young or old, it's timeless music. And so uh, this next song I think we have is Jungle Partner. And uh, in a little bit we'll talk about James Booker, but he's just another pianist that makes timeless music. All these musicians and composers of these songs just make timeless music, and that's what I believe the blues is. Anyone can relate to it. Not everybody can necessarily create it, in a way, because it takes different experiences to pull from, but it's <coughs> definitely something that we all can feel and um, get into.
that we just played this James Burker tune. And I want to open up the floor to some questions. Again, in the beginning, I talked about how we like to educate, enlighten, and entertain you all to instill this appreciation, right? And so what makes our program so different at the park is that we open up, again, for you to ask any questions that you may have. Or I ask you about the food that you've been eating. <laughs> You know, but seriously, we want we want you to leave here um, feeling like you understand New Orleans culture a little bit better. That's the mission of the Park Service. We have these spaces created to preserve this history and culture. So it's all fun, but we want you to leave this space feeling like you have learned something and also enjoyed it. We have these wonderful musicians who have studied. Yes. Who are, who's taking the culture and instilling it within himself. So I know Shea Pierre has done a lot of work with James, not with him, but studying James Booker. Um, so if they don't have any questions yet, can you talk about this song maybe? Okay. And then that gives you time to think of a question, right? Hey, how, how are you guys doing? My name is uh, Shea Pierre, and uh, I'm a, a native of New Orleans. I'm a native of the uh, piano tradition here. Uh, um, I think I consider myself to come from a long lineage of great pianos, uh, starting from like Jelly Roll Martin and uh, going down to James Booker, Ellis Marcellus. But James Booker was a, or he still is a huge inspiration of mine. and. Um, that song, Junko Partner, that's the one song that I I kind of stayed away from. It, it, you know, because it, he got, he, he, because the, um, not only is it technically hard, but um, the story behind the song and um, what 
the song meant to him. And the way he played it is sacred. It's, it's almost like Cold Train to Love Supreme. So um, um, as far as that song, like that's that's my listening pleasure. But I did study a lot of James Booker. And, uh, you know, he's a piano prince of New Orleans. Uh, he, he he was a uh, force to be reckoned with. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still a student of his. And uh, I'm a student of all the other great pianists from New Orleans as well. Thank you. Does anyone have a question about? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Before <laughs> before he answers, uh, the question is: the music doesn't look like music that she has seen. The written out music. So Shay's going to go into detail about what is it that makes it so different. Um, this is almost like a canvas. Like I said, um, it's a. Uh, it's a, uh, it's it's almost like a reference for us to uh, be able to improvise over. So you know, there's not like a lot of notes, but it's like certain references, like certain chords that we play certain skills over. So it's it's uh it's kind of like a cheat sheet, you know. <laughs> All right, we have time for about two more questions. Get it out now. We're going to leave right after the show, so we won't answer anything after when we finish up. <laughs> All right, question in the back. I'd like to know how each of you got started. I mean, did your mom make you take piano lessons at school, or, or, did, or did your parents or you know, did your mom say, oh, drums, you know, that's for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to know how I, did we all I get can, started. I can solve this real quick. <clears throat> um, I'm a fifth generation New Orleans musician. Uh, my family's been in this area since 1860, and uh, there are many instrumentalists in my family. Uh, one thing my family never did was force us to play music. Music was always around, and it was os like osmosis. When you're around something and you think it's normal, you want to do what you see. So that's what we did. My grandfather played, my father, my uncle. I have two great uncles that played with Louis Armstrong. So the family tradition has been that way for years. My great grandfather played tuba on one of the river boats here going up and down the Mississippi. So, but you know, there was a structure as far as, like when we have family gatherings, everybody brings their instrument and we get together as a family and play. But there's some that just do it as a hobby because it's just what they saw growing up and then there are others, uh, others of us that do it as a profession. This is how we make our living. So no, it's not a, it's not a thing where you force the kid. See, and my family believes that if you force a kid to do something, they're gonna do the opposite. So that's why we never did that. They never did that. Never like, well, you gotta play this, you gotta play. I tried all the instruments until I got to the two that didn't hurt. <laughs> I can play a little piano, I can play drums. The other instruments, they hurt. No. <laughs> Brass instruments, that's for crazy people. <laughs> Woodwind instruments, of, for people that are deranged. I'm not putting a piece of wood in my mouth and have it vibrating up and I'm not doing that, no. <laughs> then I tried the bass and the guitar, because my dad's a bass player, my grandfather played banjo and guitar, and I tried that. And it was like, you know, it's like being a diabetic patient all the time. You're sticking your fingers there. No, nah, that, that hurts. I'm not doing that. I want something that I can deliver the pain without the pain being delivered to me. <laughs> so that's why I chose the drums and I chose piano and also I sing. So yeah, in, in New Orleans families, it's, it's just a cultural thing. Kids grow up seeing other people do it, so they want to do it. They want to be a part of it. And like I told the story last week, for me as a young musician, I felt as though I had arrived when I started playing jobs with people that were in my grandfather's band. When I first started playing at Preservation Hall at 22 years old, I was in a band of 80 and 90 year olds, and they beat me to death. <laughs> so, yeah, to answer your question, yeah. We're the lift your soul expansion. You're welcome. You've got another question over here. Yes, uh, are you satisfied with, I think that's the best story yet. Okay. We'll, we'll get to it. All right, so your question back there.
I, I, got, I got something for you, too, but go ahead. All you right. go first. I want to repeat the question. I just got finished talking. Uh, the gentleman wants to know where, is the, where has New Orleans jazz began or when did the different cultures mix, am I correct? And what is New Orleans' truest, purest, what group really paved the way? Is that the correct question? Okay. There's no particular group. But I'll put it to you this way. If what happened in New Orleans didn't happen, nothing past the sticks of the Mississippi would sound like it does today. Even, even as far as some of the bands that emulate in Europe, be, the Beatles wouldn't sound the way they sound if what happened in New Orleans did not happen. So take it for what it's worth. That's that's. That's the honest truth. But New also, Orleans, New Orleans was the only place that had an amalgamation of cultures, styles, sounds, period, from classical to African to Native American, especially uh, to South, Amer South America, con oh, conglomerating in one place that was not allowed in other places in the United States. So that's where that that's where New Orleans plays as the first. And then also to add to that, a lot of the music that came out of Kansas City and Chicago and St. Louis and all those places was because bands from New Orleans had migrated to those other places. Interesting point that you brought that up. In St. Louis, there was a statute passed by the Musicians Union in St. Louis when it came to bands from New Orleans playing. I'll tell you why. We in New Orleans, they, and I get this question also, what's the difference between traditional jazz and what's the difference between Dixieland? It's two, only two differences. First difference is, is tempo. Dixieland music is way faster than we play traditional jazz. Second of all, song selection. Some, song, some songs cross both but Dixieland music has more of its own repertoire and trad music has its own repertoire. But when bands in the 1920s went to St. Louis and Chicago and Kansas City and all these places, we were playing the music laid back like we played it here. And the youngsters there were dancing like the youngsters would dance here. And they found that to be very offensive because it looked like they were doing something else but they were standing up. So, when New Orleans bands came, they had to play over 70 beats a minute. They could not play anything slower than this because when they did, they wanted to grind and bump the way that they do here in New Orleans. So, yeah, New Orleans is kind of, you know, we, we kind of started and everybody else jumped on the train and started doing their own thing. Yeah, easy. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> ragtime came from the speakeasies and the brothels that we had in Storyville. And the reason that it came was because the piano players were emulating what they heard the bands doing on the street. Also, the piano players also mostly came from a classical background. There was a big classical scene here in New Orleans in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So they took those classical pieces of music and they would put that funky ragtime rhythm to them. And that was kind of the segue between the brass band or the military bands to the brass band, brass band to ragtime, then ragtime into what we know now as jazz. And then the stuff that Buddy Bolden and were doing was actually, actually blues. It wasn't really jazz, it was more blues. But they were doing it with horns rather than 
guitars and you know vocals and that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's you know everything kind of passed through here, and then one, once it left here, it took its own you know its own route. So that's why you know we we're definitely other roots. That's right, <laughs> or as we like to say here, a little land yap, a little something extra. We got one more question. One more. No, no, we do not play the same song the same way. No, actually, only time, only time that happens if it's a written piece of music, like if we're doing it for a show or something like that. But if you got different musicians, it's gonna feel different. Mm -mm. Really, even then, does it get played the same way? Right. Even though it might be on the same music that you just had like you played ten minutes ago, you turn around, you're tired, so it's gonna sound different. Yep. So. I hope you got all your questions out. Now it's time to get back to some music, to get back to some blues. Thank you all for those, for those answers. Yes. All right. Every morning, fine, sweet morning. I'm alone and crying the blues. I'm so tired of paying these dues. Every evening, fine, sweet morning. Every morning, fine, sweet morning. Cause of all the trouble that I see, life's a losing gamble to me. Every morning, fine, sweet morning. Lord, I Along with my grief. But Lord, I pray, really and truly pray, somebody brings me relief. Every morning I'm on it. I'm alone and crying the blues. I'm so tired of paying these dues. Every morning finds me moaning.
Thursday morning. I'm alone and crying the blues. I'm so tired of paying these dues. Every morning, Friday morning. Every morning, Friday morning. Cause of all the trouble I see, life's a losing gamble to me. Every morning, Friday morning. Yes, the Lord, I spend plenty of days and nights alone with my grief. Alone with my grief. But Lord. Morning. I'm alone and crying the blues. I'm so tired of playing the stew. Every morning I'm moaning. <laughs> Now's the time to move to another song. That's called Now's the Time.
song Charlie Parker of course did not write the lyrics to it uh, Eddie Jefferson came behind and wrote lyrics to um, this melody that Charlie Parker wrote and um, basically it just means to appreciate the person while they're living and we want to appreciate from either the great to even just people around you your mother daughter appreciate them now is the time to just give thanks to everything, and I'm appreciating his music and his legacy. And now's the time to move to the next song. How come you do me like you do, do, do? to you. Well, if you rave, I got to get you told. Cause I can change your temperature from hot to cold. How come you do me like you do? do, do? How come you do me like you do?
let me be Cause I can be you and what you do Do, do, do. How come you do me like you do? And why do you try to make me feel so blue when I ain't done nothing to you? Well, if you rave, I got to get you told. Cause I can change your temperature from hot to cold. How come you do me like you do, do, do? How come you do me like you do in the morning? How come you do me like you do in the evening? How come you do me like you do? All right. Thank you. So, I think we're down to our last song. And before we, we go into it, I want to thank you for coming out to this program on behalf of New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. We're grateful for this partnership with New Orleans Jazz Museum. And so I see a lot of you here, and you probably came down to have fun for, you know, Mardi Gras and go to the parades. But we have a site down the street that you just stop by before you go out and do other festivities down at 419 Decatur. And if you're interested in any more programs like this one, we have a whole week full of different programs featuring different musicians and artists down the street at 419 Decatur. Y'all got that? Good, good. And so I believe we have a 5 p.m. show here on the balcony, um, and it's free, open to the public. So come back. Again, visit nolajazzmuseum.org for programs here, and nps.gov for programs down at our national park. So we have one last song, and it's Go to the Mardi Gras. Oh, wait. Let me also shout out the band again, Chez Pierre. Carrie Lewis Sr., yeah. Gerald French, Saskia Walker. I'm Jay Perdue. Thank you for coming through. Yes. And tune in next week for this progression in black American music. We're going down to the Mardi Gras.
for another show. Go down to 419. See y'all next time.